Another absolutely insane week of AI news. We have announcements from Microsoft, OpenAI, Intel, Anthropic, robotics companies, and even Adobe. We have incredible research papers that are changing the way people think about prompts. Let's get into it all today. Fresh off the heels of testifying in front of the Senate, Sam Altman and the OpenAI team released a blog post talking about how they think about governance of superintelligence. And they talk about now being the right time to start thinking about governance. Some important snippets from that article include, given the picture as we see it now, it's conceivable that within the next 10 years, AI systems will exceed expert skill level in most domains and carry out as much productive activity as one of today's largest companies. They also mentioned the common comparison between artificial intelligence and nuclear energy in terms of governance and safety. And they lay out three ways that they think governance for artificial intelligence should manifest. Number one, coordination between leading development efforts with AI. So they're talking about Google, OpenAI, Anthropic, and many other companies that are advancing and are at the cutting edge of artificial intelligence development. Basically, things that are happening at GPT-4 level and beyond. Second, again, referencing nuclear energy as a good analogy, they talk about IAEA, which is the International Atomic Energy Agency, basically the global watchdog for everything atomic energy. And third, they talk about the need for the technical capability to actually keep super intelligence safe. And what that really means is alignment. And AI alignment is making sure that AI's incentives, AI's goals are aligned with the humanity's goals a very important topic to cover in the realm of AI safety. But OpenAI also got a lot of criticism, especially after Sam Altman's testimony. A lot of open source proponents think this is regulatory capture. Basically, they think OpenAI, because they're so far ahead, is gonna set up so many hoops and red tape to go through with government that nobody else is gonna be able to catch up or compete with them. But they made it clear in this blog post that that is not what they want. Specifically, we think it's important to allow companies and open source projects to develop models below a significant capability threshold without the kind of regulation we describe here, including burdensome mechanisms like licenses or audits. And they're saying up into a certain capability threshold, you should be able to, as an open source company or a small developer, be able to build and innovate what you want. Now, what that threshold is, who knows? And who's gonna be the one to decide? That's the real question. Next, Microsoft had a big week of announcements. Everything from integrating AI and ChatGPT specifically into a bunch of their different products to OpenAI having their default browsing capability powered by Bing. Let's take a look. First, browsing with ChatGPT. Now, browsing is available to all paying users. But here's the thing, they're now using Bing to power all browsing and it's really powerful. This is also another strike at Google, especially after all of the Google announcements from last week's Google I.O. conference. Here's a quick video from Microsoft's Build event where they talk about the announcement. This is just the start of what uh, we plan to do with our partners in OpenAI to bring the best of being to ch the ChatGPT experience. Next, Microsoft is bringing Copilot to Windows, which is bringing ChatGPT into the very deepest layers of the Windows environment. Here's a video of some of the capabilities today. Next, we're bringing the co-pilot to the biggest canvas of all, Windows. You're gonna hear a lot from Panos tomorrow about it, but uh, I think that this is going to make every user a power user of Windows. Let's Microsoft is really going all in with ChatGPT, one of their absolute best acquisitions, best investments of all time, and potentially one of the best corporate investments of all time. Also, developers are gonna love this. Now there's gonna be common plugins across all ChatGPT platforms. That means Office 365, Windows, ChatGPT itself. You build a plugin once and it'll work across all of these different platforms. That is an incredible win for developers and really makes building on top of ChatGPT even more attractive. Next, back in March, Microsoft announced Microsoft 365 Copilot, and that means bringing ChatGPT functionality to the entire suite of Office products, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, everything. And now they've released a bunch more details. Let's take a look.
past, they announced Microsoft Azure can now build AI applications easily. We're excited to share our new Azure AI Studio. With just a few clicks, developers can now ground powerful conversational AI models, such as OpenAI's ChatGPT and GPT-4, on their own data. That means fine tuning is gonna be easily done in Azure. So of course, at the Build event, they announced a lot of AI tools specifically for developers. I'm personally very excited about this. Now, in the world of generative AI art, we have two really amazing announcements. Number one, Firefly is coming out of beta and it's getting put directly in Photoshop. I made a video about Generative Fill, the new Adobe Photoshop product, and it works pretty well, but the potential is going to be incredible. Right from Adobe Photoshop, you can add generative art to any image. You can remove objects you don't want. Here's a quick video of some of the things you can do. The other huge announcement in the world of generative art is Drag GAN. It's an interactive point-based manipulation on the generative image manifold. What does that actually mean? This is something that Photoshop should be actually quite scared of. Let's look at some of these examples. So with just a few clicks, you can completely manipulate what an image is, what angle it's at, what the objects of the image look like. It is absolutely incredible. The code base for this is not released yet, but it will be soon and I'll be doing a video all about that. Absolutely insane. Just yesterday, Nvidia's stock price skyrocketed. For a company whose stock price is already up tremendously this year when the rest of the tech market is down, for them to jump 25% in a single day based on their forecasts is absolutely incredible. Nvidia is extremely well positioned to be one of the leading hardware providers for all of artificial intelligence, and their stock price reflects that. But not to be outdone by Nvidia, Intel had their own announcements. Specifically, they called out Nvidia directly. Intel's broad portfolio of HPC and AI products provides competitive performance with Intel data center GPU Max Series 1550 showing an average speed up of 30% over NVIDIA's H100 on a wide range of scientific workloads. Now, a lot of the supercomputer announcements have to do with scientific research, but these are powerful chips that can have broadly applicable applications. And their new supercomputer is called Aurora. They also announced plans to release generative AI models specifically for science. These generative AI models for science will be trained on general text, code, scientific text, and structured scientific data from biology, chemistry, material science, physics, medicine, and other sources. The resulting models, with as many as 1 trillion parameters, will be used in a variety of scientific applications. I'm really excited about this. Anything to further the progress of science is exciting. The next thing I wanna tell you about are two incredible research papers that were published this week. The first one is called Tree of Thoughts, Deliberate Problem Solving with Large Language Models. I made an entire video about this paper because it was so interesting. Please check it out. I'll drop a link in the description below. The core concept of this model is being able to give large language models the ability to do planning, look forward, backtrack when they make mistakes and test different possibilities for the same prompt. So the tree of thoughts technique allows large language models to lay out all of the options for a potential solution, go through them one by one, rank them and go down the tree into branches, trying to figure out what is the best possible path to a solution. And they were able to achieve a 900% improvement on logic and reasoning problems. It is absolutely incredible. Please check out the video I made about this. Next is a paper called Lima, Less is More for Alignment. And what they've done is taken the 65 billion parameter Llama model, open source model, and they've trained it on only 1,000 fine-tuned instructions, prompts, and responses to achieve results on GPT-3, BARD, and even GPT-4. So the point they're making is it doesn't actually take a whole ton of data to train these models really well. What it does take is training it on extremely high quality data. And that's something that I've heard time and time again. Last, the company Anthropic raised $450 million from top tier venture capitalists 
in what continues to be an avalanche of funding for AI companies. Anthropic is the company behind Claude, a very competitive large language model that is hosted, but it works extremely well. And they have a 100,000 token context length, which is absolutely insane. Anthropic raised money from Spark Capital, Google, Salesforce, Sound Ventures, Zoom Ventures, and others. Any competition in the AI space, whether hosted or open source, I am all for. Now, this has been an incredible week for AI news and announcements. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving me a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.